Good evening, you're watching this Mongolian Beyond. I'm your host, Tanner Gambatar. And for our top stories, 1,669 new confirmed cases of COVID-19 and 12 additional deaths reported. Digital content created by the exhibits of the Great Mongol Empire period opens. The Ministry of Education and Science worked in Bayoli province. And for other news, stay tuned. The Ministry of Health reported that 1,669 new COVID-19 cases were confirmed today and 12 more people have died. The Ministry of Health today on October 27 has reported that 1,669 new COVID-19 cases were detected in the past 24 hours after tests were carried out at PCR laboratories across the country. Unfortunately, 12 people died due to COVID-19 complications. All new cases are of domestic transmission, 917 out of which were confirmed in Ulaanbaatar and the remaining 752 were confirmed in the provinces. 17,688 COVID-19 patients are being treated at hospitals nationwide. Additionally, 52,698 patients are being treated at home. Among the 17,688 COVID-19 patients being treated at hospitals nationwide, 8,334 are showing mild symptoms of illness and 357 are critical condition. Currently in Mongolia, 2.2 million people have received their first COVID-19 vaccine dose nationwide and over 2.1 million have received a second dose of vaccine. The National Museum of Mongolia opens a virtual reality and artificial reality exhibition themed the Great Mongol Empire. Details are in the following report. These exhibits of ancient times, restored with virtual reality technology, look like as if the exhibition visitors are time-traveling. In addition, it allows us to demonstrate the great history of the Mongol Empire during this time of the pandemic. Today we are launching a digital museum exhibition in collaboration with Ziv Contents. We are very happy that we are opening this digital content of the Great Mongol Empire and promoting our rich history to an international audience and visitors despite the difficult times of the pandemic and closed borders. Today we are launching a digital museum exhibition in collaboration with Ziv Contents. We are very happy that we are opening this digital contents of the Great Mongol Empire and promoting our rich history to an international audience and visitors, despite the difficult times of the pandemic and closed borders. Mongolia is proud of its rich history of 13th and 14th century that makes us unique. We made our exhibition of that period into a digital history. It's a step forward in promoting Mongolia to the world. Artificial reality technology allows us to demonstrate video contents of the exhibits and with all explanations. The Mongol Empire of the 13th and 14th century was the largest contiguous land empire in history and the second largest empire by landmass, second only to the British Empire. Originating in Mongolia in East Asia, the Mongol Empire at its height stretched from the Sea of Japan to parts of Eastern Europe, extending northward into parts of the Arctic, eastward and southward into the Indian subcontinent, mainland Southeast Asia and the Iranian plateau, and westward as far as the Levant and the Carpathian Mountains. The Minister of Education and Science in Hamaklan visited Bayoutli province on the 24th of October during a working visit and got acquainted with the activities of some educational institutions. The minister also met with the management of relevant organizations, school and kindergarten teachers, staff and citizens. During the meeting held at the Music and Drama Theatre of Ulyi City, the parliament and government members provided information on the policy and activities being implemented in the education sector and exchanged views on the current issues and measures to be taken in the sector of Bayung Ulyi province. For the last 10 years, the province has ranked at last among all Mongolian regions according to the results of the general admission test. According to the minister, this is due to the fact that there is no bilingual education program. Bayoutli province is the province that should be given the most attention during the education transition. Neither our ministry nor the Bayoutli Education Department have been able to do that. 
There are a lot of problems today, but we still have some hope. We have a good foundation of teachers and managers. In Bayolgi, with a predominantly Kazakh population, local teachers suggest that a bilingual curriculum be approved and implemented, as students who come from the province to state universities spend their first year to get adapted to the Mongolian language textbooks and manuals. Minister Inka Mahlang stated that the ministry will pay special attention to this issue in the future and will introduce good practices of countries like Switzerland, where citizens speak several different languages in different areas of the country. Now let's take a look at the currency exchange rates provided by Mongol Bank. Now let's take a look at our regular future on sports. The World Amateur Chess Championship was held in Rio Disc, Greece from 16th to 26th of this month. Five athletes from Mongolia took part in the competition and 12-year-old Sot Bitlik won a silver medal in the under 1700 a low rating category. He played nine games, won eight and won a silver medal with a narrow margin of one draw. Sot Bitlik, a 12-year-old student who competed in the competition, won a silver medal with 8.5 points from 9 games. He was coached by Grandmaster Bitlun. Former member of parliament Lunde Jensen, who competed in this category, took 29th place. Tinumbalt, who competed in the under 2000 category, took 10th place. Manduha took 17th place. And Hailu, who competed in the under 2300 category, took 28th place. Game wrong, huh? The Asian Football Confederation and the 23 Asian Cup qualifiers kicked off on Monday. The J Group matches are taking place in Ulaanbaatar City, and the Mongolian national team drew one all with Thailand in the first match. Balchinyam scored the equalizer in the 76th minute for the Mongolian national team, which was trailing 1 0 since the early stage of the match. The Thai national team consists of a number of players who play in Europe and lead the group. Mongolia's under-23 national team will play its next match against Malaysia on October 28th at 11 a.m. and the last match will be against Laos on 31st of October at 3 p.m. All the matches are held at the Mongolian Football Federation Stadium. Here's the weather forecast of world's major cities. Well, that's all for today and thank you for staying with us. We'll see you tomorrow with more news and updates. Have a nice evening. Goodbye.